Welcome to this Maundy Thursday service. I encourage you, if you're worshiping at home, to gather around a simple meal. Um, when we get to the Holy Communion part, you are welcome to push pause on this service to eat your meal together after we've shared the words of institution. And then enjoy each other's company as we conclude the service. We join a, jo a solemn journey of three days that has changed the world and our own lives. Followers of Jesus have been taking this journey since his first followers took it long ago. This is the night of love. We pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. On this night, Jesus took a towel and basin and washed his disciples' feet. On this night, he told them to do the same for others and to show their love for him and for one another. This is the night of love. of all love. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
In the name of Jesus, our humble Savior, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Gracious and merciful God, we confess to you our reluctance to enter the wilderness places where we are confronted with our true selves, the places where we are tempted to put worldly values before our desire for you, the places where our hunger for power and wealth is greater than our hunger for your justice, the places where we are tempted to manipulate you to satisfy our own needs. Forgive us, O oh God, and make us new again. God has called you beloved and made you God's own. Today and always, in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our reading comes from Matthew chapter 26, verses 17 through 30. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely, not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the last sermon in our series focusing on sacraments. And today it was clear, of course, that we should look closely at Holy Communion. I've appreciated Rachel Held Evans' book, Searching for Sunday, both for the inspiration for the series as well as offering such elegant words to draw us into the topic. And as she talks about communion, she quotes Barbara Brown Taylor, who says, with all the conceptual truths in the universe at his disposal, Jesus did not give them something to think about together when he was gone. Instead, he gave them concrete things to do, specific ways of being together in their bodies that would go on teaching them what they needed to know when he was no longer around to teach them himself. Do this, he said. Not believe this, but do this in remembrance of me. And they did this remembering not so much his death, but his life, his friendship, his teaching, his healing, his love. They remembered how they felt when he was telling them a parable, or perhaps the silly face he made when he bit into a lemon. They remembered the smell of the oil broken over his feet and the taste of the wine he had made from water. They remembered how compelling he was when he called them from their workplaces and their homes. And they remembered his tears, when he reached the tomb of Lazarus. And they told one another about that final night gathered around the Passover meal, how it became different than any Passover before or since. They recalled together his words, ominous, dangerous, haunting, that he would be betrayed and denied. And they remembered their response then and their response later, how not one of them stuck by him and they remembered the feeling of horror, of loss, of shame, 
as they saw his form hanging limply from a Roman cross, strung up alongside so many others, a symbol of the futility of defying so great an empire as Rome, so great a reign as Caesar's. But even before they finished their meal, they also shared the most amazing story. Every time, every gathering, every moment filled with the memory of an empty tomb, of confusion and messengers and feet fleeing back to Jerusalem in fear and hope, they're not even sure anymore. And then they begin to share their personal stories of meeting the resurrected Jesus, Remember when he came into the room and blew us away, showing us his hands and feet? And of course, Thomas will say, I wasn't there, but I remember when he came back, just for me. For me, he thinks. That's special. And another will recall walking home to Emmaus and encountering, encountering a stranger who talked with them about Jesus' death and ate with them. I still can't believe I didn't recognize him until he broke the bread. And others won't be able to share personal stories of the risen Jesus himself, but they'll share their experiences of Jesus at work in their neighbor. He brought me food when I couldn't go to the store, one will say. She called me every week to make sure I was doing okay, says another. They welcomed me, even though everyone else told me I was an abomination. I got a hug every time I got on the bus to come to worship. And the stories will continue long into the night. The stories of remembrance shared around a table of simple food. And though it makes the service streamlined and communion expedient, I'm often sorry that our Holy Eucharist isn't a full meal, complete with stories and conversation and a sharing of more than wafers and a dab of wine. And while this pandemic has wreaked havoc in so many ways, I think that one blessing hidden in the midst is the fact that we can and will worship at a table tonight. And perhaps if you're eating alone, you can set a meal and call a friend and share your stories of how Christ has met you today. Because this is what it means to remember. It's more than thinking about something together. It's concrete. It's tangible. It's communal. It's telling the story again and again until every generation knows it by heart and can tell your story as well as their own. Evans describes St. Lydia's in New York City, which is actually the inspiration for our Advent dinner church. Pastor Emily Scott says, We do church this way because people are hungry. People in New York have hungry bellies that may be filled with home-cooked food. People in New York have hungry souls that may be filled with holy text, holy conversation. And these hungers are sated when we come together and eat. We do church this way because people are looking for Jesus. People are looking for Jesus and thinking that maybe, just maybe, they see him, and then again, maybe not. But when we sit down together and break bread... We glimpse him for a moment in one another's eyes and say to each other, I see Christ at this table. I see him when we sit down together and eat. This is what Holy Communion is about. About Jesus revealing himself in community, in bread and wine and soup and chocolate cake. About the body of Christ remembering itself into a resurrection experience of life and hope. Amen.
we pray, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. This is the night of love, and this is the table of love. At this table, Christ who loves us is with us. He is with us, and we are his. We belong to God. Yours the blessing, yours the praise. From the unimaginable silence before the Big Bang, beyond the farthest reaches of time and space, from infinity to infinity, everlasting to everlasting, you are God, boundless in love and power. You preached good news that God's kingdom has drawn near and gathered disciples then and now to learn and show the world what life in God's reign means. Healing for the sick, new life for the dead, cleansing for the lepers, sight for the blinded, food for the hungry, freedom from the possessed, love poured out for all. That the night, night you, you took, took a, a towel and, and basin, washed your disciples' feet, and taught, taught them, them to, to do, do likewise. likewise. That night, the one in which you were betrayed, you took bread, you blessed it, broke it, and gave it to your disciples and told them, this is my body, broken for you. Remember me. We, we remember. remember. That night, you took the cup, praised God, shared it, and said, this is my blood of the new covenant for you. Remember me. We, we remember. remember. We remember that night, the night of love, as we gather around your table of love, one in heart, one in mind, one in you, Holy Spirit, as you move us to pray for the church and the world, that we may proclaim the gospel boldly. Hear, Hear us, us, Lord. Lord that healing may come for people who are sick and peoples who are torn and weary. Hear, Hear us, us, Lord. That many dead and left for dead may be raised and death itself vanquished. Hear, Hear us, Lord. Lord. That all who are unclean may receive your cleansing grace. Hear, Hear us, Lord. Lord. That all who are possessed, oppressed, distressed, depressed, and downcast may be set free at last. Hear, Hear us, Lord. Lord, that we may love one another and all your creation as you have loved us. Hear, Hear us, Lord. Lord. Even so, come and fill this feast, Holy Spirit, on this night and every night until we eat it new at the marriage supper of the Lamb. All, all blessing, blessing, honor, honor glory, glory, and power be yours, yours holy, holy triune, triune God, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is a time to push pause and eat your meal together, share your stories together, and then come back to us when you've completed. In John, Jesus says, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. We pray, lead us not, not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver, deliver us from, from evil. evil. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me.
going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. betrayer is at hand. Grace and love reveal. 
still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how, then, would, you, would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. We pray, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.